Just when you thought your beautiful blades of grass were blowing in the wind, you had no idea that Brood X was completing their life cycle, ready to emerge from their 17-year nap. Now you know that grass is moving because you have a guest, an unwanted guest, and his name is Cicada. Here is a cluster of cicadas at the base of a tree in Trotwood, Ohio. If you think this is the end, it's just the beginning. You can head and eye roll all you want. This is going to be a nuisance and a natural wonder for the next several weeks. Emerging in huge numbers is part of the cicada's survival strategy. They literally come out in billions and then millions are eaten, but there are still millions left to reproduce. The female uh, makes a slit in the bark, lays her eggs. The eggs will drink the juices out of the tree. Then at whatever point that they are ready to drop to the ground, they'll fall to the ground, burrow into the ground, and live there for 17 years, feed on the roots of the tree. In 17 years, we'll start the whole process again. Now let's listen to that annoying sound. Here we have a photo of the cicada's anatomy. Cicadas have a special organ inside of their bodies called the timbre. This is the organ that produces sound. When the cicada contracts, the timbre muscle begins to vibrate. That's where that sound comes from. Cicada songs can reach upwards to 90 decibels, which is as loud as your lawnmower. What is most fascinating about cicadas is that they emerge in 15 states plus the District of Columbia. The epicenter of their activity is typically Maryland, D.C., and Virginia. There are 12 broods of 17-year cicadas and 3 broods of 13-year cicadas. Each brood completes their cycle and emerges. In recent years, some broods have appeared early and others have appeared late. Scientists attribute this to climate change. The 17-year cycle cicadas emerge in the north and the 13-year cycle cicadas emerge from the south and Mississippi Valley. Brood 10, which has been assigned the Roman numeral 10, is the largest brood of the 17-year cicadas. By now you're asking the question, are the cicadas safe? Do they sting? Do they bite? Do they carry disease? And the answer is no. In fact, they are very safe to eat. What's probably less safe to eat and is something that we really don't think about are the cows that we eat or the pigs that we eat. Uh, those have been known to transmit diseases to humans. And when you look at the over 1 million species of insects, there are about 1,700 that are consumed by people across the globe. And I welcome everyone to another episode of Tabernacle Talks. And with me today, we have a pest control consultant, Greg Brown. Hey, Greg. How are you doing today? <laughs> you know, I'm doing good. And I just want to thank you. You know, I'm, I'm all decked out, ready for bug hunting. And I, I, I got my spray here, too, to talk about cicadas. Uh, so... Let, let's talk about them because I know everybody's going to see them soon in Ohio if they're in certain areas. Uh, if I walk out in my backyard and I see tons of them, should I call pest control? No, I really wouldn't call pest control because, like I said, they're a seasonal bug. They'll be around for maybe a couple months, but the pest control really is not going to do nothing. They can try to, but I mean, there's really not going to be able to do much for the bugs. 
and I know you ain't going to rake them up and they ain't going <laughs> to rake them up. So you might as well just let them run their course. So I've heard they're going to come out in the billions, the billions. Right. So when you rake them up, there's just more to follow. Is that pretty true? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to come. Well, actually, like I said, when the uh, when the cicadas come up, they didn't all die at the same time, but the majority of them did. So what happened is some will come up in the beginning, and then like uh, that'll be like the first wave, and then after that, you're going to have some come up after that, and it will probably be the the bulk of them, and then after that, uh, towards the end of the sea, you might catch the late bloomers. So spraying you may kill them but they're going to keep coming and then they're going to fly from other people's yards to your yard so you just i wouldn't waste money on uh pest control <laughs> you wouldn't waste money or bug spray right but there you go <laughs> <laughs> okay so if i've got kids and they want to play with them are they harmful to people no, uh, cicadas are not really harmful people. They're just a nuisance bug because there's just so many of them and they're flying around. And they just, they get on your nerve. They just more like a big old pest. Cause, but they're really not harmful to people because in some places people eat them. And uh, pest, uh, cicadas are kind of like uh, in, the, in the neighborhood of like seafood. Uh, the crustaceans, shrimp, and all that. So if you're allergic to um, seafood, shell food, shell, you know, stuff like that, you'll be allergic to cicadas. So as far as your question, they're not, really not harmful to people, but they don't want them around because they're a big pest. Well, you know, that's interesting you bring up that you can eat them because I actually did find a picture of cicada kebabs. Uh, they're a delicacy in Beijing. And I actually found a cicada pizza. And I'm going to show a picture of that to everybody here. What does this look like, everybody? So Greg's absolutely right. You can eat them. And uh, you want to dip them in chocolate or whatever you want to do. Now it's time to do them because you're going to have a ton of them. Hey, Marcus. How you doing? Hey, Kevin. Welcome home. Thanks. Cicadas? Just, cicadas it is. All right. And I got your text message about how excited you were, so <laughs> okay. you ready to get started? Sure. All right, we got some hot oil in here. We're going to throw in your favorite dish here. We got about, looks like 30 female cicadas. Oh, yeah. That's the sound you want to hear. Not so much the feeling you want to feel, but the sound you want to hear. <laughs> it's blisteringly hot in here right now. <laughs> So we're going to have like this really nice, crispy, rich flavor burst when you bite into these things. It's going to be like a nice kind of nutty, really earthy kind of taste. Got a wonderful assortment of vegetables here. Maybe grasshoppers tomorrow. What do you think? They're in the same family. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in your favorite stir fry mix here. And this is going to really bring the flavor out in these bad boys. All right, this is looking fantastic, smelling even better. I think we're about ready to start plating. What do you think? Bring it on. All right. Starving. All right. All right, let's go. Let's have a cicada right off the bat. Do I eat the eyes too? The eyes? <laughs> a little crunchy. Got a leg. Stuck between my teeth here. Yeah. We just made the simple stir fry. Um, basically, it's just stir fry with cicadas. It's really simple, um, really good dish. We'll go uh, four at once. Hang on, Ruby. I'll give you some. There it is. Oh. Marcus, this is really delicious. I'm Thank serious. You. Thank you. How about some dessert? Oh, yes, yes. Well, yeah, let me try a little dessert. There you go. Mid-meal here. Got some chocolate-covered cicadas for you. Okay. This tastes a lot more cicada-y than the main <laughs> meal. These are good.
pets. Okay, what about my dog? Well, they're again, they're not really harmful to pets because they're not they're not poisonous and they don't bite. Uh, what happens is because of their wings and their their outer skeleton, um, they become there. If but if your pets eat them, they'll start to vomit or they'll get diarrhea because it gets into their system and it just kind of it, it irritates them like just something that just don't go good in their stomach. Okay, so I probably should watch how many cicadas my dog tries to ingest right. or put a muzzle on them if I need to. Well, I've seen uh, in some, some cases where they put like this bubble thing over the dog's head so the dog can't get down and eat the cicadas because some people don't want their dog vomiting or have diarrhea in their house, but uh, they will do that if they eat enough of them. <laughs> okay okay so i read that cicadas attract rodents rodents like cicadas so could i end up having to call pest control am i going to see more rodents because of the cicadas i don't think you really will see more rodents because wherever the rodents are now there's going to be cicadas all around them so they're going to come up and the rodents going to be there, and they're going. There are so many different insects that eat cicadas. So many other things. Birds eat them. Uh, the bees eat them. In fact, uh, there's a bee called the cicada killer, and it's going to bloom. I mean, it's going to come around about the same time that the uh, cicadas are, and it's big enough to carry a cicada away. And those, they could sting you. What? That uh, if you look it up on there, it's called a cicada killer. It's about a two inch bee. And it's, they, it's a whole bunch of holes they put in your yard. Uh, and if you happen to get that, just water your yard and that water will uh, get down in them holes and tend to scare the cicada killers away make a move to a different area just the water because the the mud collapses their holes and stuff like that wow okay so i'm going to show everybody here's a cicada killer i'm going to show that so everybody can see that so you're saying water your yard if you start noticing those large bees right and that will collapse the the tunnels the holes they have yeah with those you can kind of use a, a pest control you know, because once you water it, it'll go down into the ground and kill the kill the bug, kill the bee. So okay, Woo. okay. So, what should a homeowner do? You know, if you see all these cicadas in your yard, uh, you know, should you do anything to secure your home, like special, I don't know, screens or anything to make sure you don't have holes in them and stuff. Yeah, I would I would do that. I would make sure that my screens are patched up because you don't really want them to get into your house because the noise they make is just nerve wracking. And if you have plants and stuff like that, the vegetable garden, uh, cicadas really don't have mouths that, that can chew up vegetables or chew on your stuff, flowers like that. They have a thing like a mosquito and they kind of, uh, they scratch into the 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 bark or the branches something and they lay their eggs in there the eggs get in there then they drop off go down in the ground and they will stay down there for 17 years and they feed uh, they, they kind of use their little tweeter to suck on the roots of the trees that where they happen to die and fall around for 17 years and nobody knows i don't know how they know when to come back up but 17 years they'll be back oh wow <laughs> It's the bug that keeps on giving. Yeah. So what's the best advice you would give to someone if they've got tons of cicadas in their yard? What would you tell them? Just keep your windows and, and make, sure, make sure all your, any way that bugs could come in, I would secure that because you really don't want them to come in. You don't want them to, uh, the worst thing you could do is have a bug crawl in your mouth while you're asleep. <laughs> That's nasty, but that, oh, that's a joke. But yeah, they're, they'll get in and they'll crawl. I mean, this you'll see they're dangerous on the road because there's so many of them. Motorcyclists, um, you could step on some going down the steps and just slip. There's just kind of sweep stuff off the drive, um, off your patio or something like that. Just to 
I want to say every time you go out, just kind of get them out the way so you don't slip fall or get them in your mouth or anything like that. <laughs> That's interesting. You said that they can make a surface slick enough that a motorcyclist can actually slide off the road if they go into a swarm of them. Yeah, because they all they cover the ground. I mean, when you see literally thousands of cicadas and you got you got the street, then you got this, the bugs on top of them. When you smash them, they're going to slide. They, their bodies got that uh, intestinal guts and all that stuff. And you have enough of them, you can slip. Or a motorcycle can put on his brakes and just slide. And depending on how fast the car is going, that could probably happen with a car too. Chances of it slim, but it could happen. It's like wow. kind of grass. Well, Greg, I think you've given us a lot of, just any other extra tidbits you want to give us? You have just been fascinating. I, I, I thought people should just ignore them, but I think that there are things that you can actually do to make sure that your house is, and your pets are secure. Well, what, what I do in my own personal yard, um, I have a, I get um, a Scott's brand and what it is, is an insecticide in your yard. Um, I tell people you really shouldn't have a call a pest control company, but if you put an insecticide on your yard, not only will it kill, you know, ants and other stuff, other ants and insects like that, because most of the bugs come from the yard to your house. And when cicadas come up, you might get the few that runs into them, but I would always keep some type of uh, insecticide in your yard. Um, don't just kind of do it like fertilizer. When you put a fertilizer down, put an insecticide down. Because I used to work for Leisure Line back in the day before I went to another pest control company and started my own. And that's where I got that from. I kind of mixed the two together. And I can say I could have a barbecue in my backyard and drop something down with the insecticide that I got in the yard. I don't usually see the ants. But I can't stop the flies from coming, but the ants and other bugs, I don't even see it because of the sectorcide that I use. But so. Now, that, I guess I, I, one more question, because I do want to ask about this. A lot of people have vegetable gardens. And I, will the cicadas attack their vegetable gardens? Is there anything they need to do or just deal with them? Well, like I said, they um, cicadas don't have mouths that can chew up. They really don't, um, really don't mess with the vegetables. Um, but most people will put some kind of screening or net on them, thinking that'll keep the bugs off them, and which it will to keep them from scratching up and dropping their little eggs down around your plants and stuff like that. So if you can cover them up, if you want to do that maintenance, uh, cover them up because you're going to do it for at least a couple months before, <laughs> <laughs> before they go. Well, I've got to give you the last word because you have been so informative and I know we've got a lot of people watching this and uh, any last words you want to give us? Uh, I say kind of like uh, the cicadas. Uh, I know we've, we're not really talking about the carpenter bees but carpenter bees, cicadas, and all them kind of bugs are mainly nuisance bugs. And um, pest control does help with carpenter bees, but I don't think they'll really help with cicadas okay, unless they got a big giant vacuum. Uh, I'm just joking about that. Part. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, um, like I say, I do. I do have my own pest control pest control company and it's called Great American Pest Control. We're on 3rd Street, 1100 West 3rd Street. So um, I can give you my number and if somebody wanted to call and just ask me questions, if I don't know the answer, I will find out and give you a reasonable solution to whatever your problem is. Wonderful. Well, I'll make sure that I'm going to put your number and your address up on the site here so that everybody knows how to get in touch with you in case they have that issue or another issue that we just yeah. didn't talk about. Greg, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate all the information you've given us. Uh, thank you and I appreciate you having me.